It's time for us to talk about transparency masks. So, what's a transparency mask? It's a grayscale paint layer that controls the transparency of the layer it's attached to. In other words, a transparency mask allows you to hide a portion of an image in a non-destructive way by painting the alpha levels you want in a dedicated layer. Just like the eraser, alpha masks help you to erase portions of your image to work in a subtractive way. The main difference is that it's non-destructive. We'll see in the next video that there's another type of masks called clipping groups, which allow you to paint in a additive way inside of another layer, but again, non-destructively. And the transparency mask allow you to do the opposite, that is to say, to erase parts of your image non-destructively. You can see the result of a transparency mask, what it looks like on screen. Let's talk about the basics. First of all, to add a transparency mask, you have to right-click on a layer. And in the latest version, 3.0.1, it will be in an Add menu option, and you'll find Transparency Mask. This Add menu option contains all of the different types of masks that Krita offers. Before that, in 3.0, it should be at the bottom and you should find the option Transparency Masks. There's a shortcut in my version, but it's not there by default, it's a custom shortcut, which you can add in Settings, Configure Krita, and go to Keyboard Shortcuts. When you add the Transparency Mask, it gets added as a child of your layer. You can then paint in grayscale, to add or remove pixels. You will see that your color wheel turns black, or black and white. If you pick black and start painting, you will completely erase pixels. Black corresponds to 0% opacity. And if I start painting white, white will set the pixels in the source layer to 100% opacity. Note how it's non-destructive. I've painted with black first, and then by painting white, I've added the pixels back to the board. But you can also paint with all of the values, with any grayscale level. And this will set the pixels to an opacity level between 0 and 100%. Black corresponds to 0% opacity, white 100%, and the grays can take all of the values in between. You can use any type of brush to paint on a transparency mask. It is just like painting on a regular layer. Now, if you want to view the content of your transparency mask, you have to hold the Alt key and to click on the transparency mask's thumbnail. You will then see how your painting looks inside of it. The transparency mask can be moved like any layer. You can move them into a group and they will apply to the content of the whole group. You can see that as I'm painting, the transparency mask applies and is hiding the content of the new layer inside of that group. In Krita, you can add as many masks as you want to a single layer, which is not the case in most programs out there. If I'm adding a new one on the layer, I can paint black. Let's hide the orange part and I can add another mask and hide the blue circle. The next up, there are two things I want to show you. First of all, you can use filters on top of masks. I have the base environment for the game, and I've made a copy of it, which I've blurred completely, and I've added a transparency mask to uh, try to keep the characters in focus. But the problem is, if I start to paint a radial gradient inside of my transparency mask, I can get some of the characters back, but you can see that they are still a bit out of focus. They are still too blurry to my taste. I'll all click on the mask so you can see. I'll fire up the levels filter, which we saw in the previous video, and I'll start to push the blacks up, and then the grays towards the whites. And you can see how I'm modifying the content of the transparency mask. Now let's get back to the blur layer. 
I'll select my transparency mask and I'll fire up the levels. If I start to pull the blacks, like I've shown you, I'm managing to get the island in the middle and the characters back in focus. I can really shape the effect just the way I want it to be. So I could add some blur on the character's edges, or I could completely try to remove it and create a sharp transition so only the other elements on the side are blurred. One last thing, you can convert a layer to a transparency mask. To do that, you have to right click and go to convert and to transparency mask. Krita will desaturate your layer and use this grayscale image as a transparency mask. You can see the result in there. It might not seem too useful inside of the group. It's just removing the dark values in my layer. This has a very important use. Let's just say I want to recolor the dark parts of my image. I want to add some more blue in there. Adding a new layer filled with blue and I'll set its blending mode to color. I'll add the transparency mask inside of it as a child. So now the color effect is coloring the layer not uniformly, but it's adding its tone more so to the light parts of the image rather than the dark portions. So the first thing we have to do is to invert the transparency mask. I'll isolate it and press Ctrl I. We see a little bit of yellow and green that still appears. I will select my transparency mask again and fire up the levels. I'm going to push the black to hide more and more of the top layer. Playing with the sliders until I get a nice effect. I'm only coloring the darker portions of my layer, adding some kind of bluish tone to the whole piece. I can then go back to my color layer and modify its color a bit and see if there's something I like more in there. Maybe add a little bit more purple. All right. I'll then lower its opacity, and voila, we have our result. Converting a layer to a transparency mask allows you to target only a part of the value range and to apply a certain effect to it. All right, here's an example on how to use the transparency masks in your workflow doing game art. I don't use them too often because I use more of an other feature we'll see in the next video, which is clipping masks or alpha inheritance. But there are still cases where transparency masks are very useful, and I'll show just that. We have this character here, and I'd like to add some highlights to the armor pieces to really enhance his volume. He looks a bit flat right now. I'm going to use the layer picking tool by R clicking and R shift clicking on these armor pieces here. Grab the whole armor and the glove. Press Control Shift G to create a clipping group. Now I'll pick a lighter color, a softer brush, and I'll start painting my highlight. We have a decent effect here. I'll recolor it in blue using the Ctrl U keyboard shortcut, the hue saturation filter. This is a good occasion to see what we can use that filter for. I'm using it to tweak the colors and see if I'm looking more for a grayish light, more for a bluish one. With the base paint, you have really strong highlights on the top and on the glove that's facing in a bit of a different direction from the rest of the arm, the light is fading. I will right click on my mask layer and add a transparency mask. The first thing I'll do is pick a pure black. Pure black means that I'll make my pixels fully transparent. And I'll start painting in the places where I want the pixels to be fully transparent. Note that I'm using a smudging brush here. So I'm able to push back the whites of the alpha mask and to start mixing blacks and whites together. I can lower the opacity of my brush with the I key and pull it back up with the O key as well. 
So right there, I can use the mask just to refine my highlights and to kind of do a polishing work. I'm just removing the pixels in the darkest areas of the sprite. Let's look at the difference with and without the mask. You'll see it's fairly subtle. That's the base color we added, and that's with the mask. It's a type of job we could have done with the eraser. But as I told you in the video, the advantage of using transparency masks is that it's fully non-destructive. Okay, let me show you another thing we can do with transparency masks. Let's take this character again. And what I'd like to do in the game is, as he is fighting, there will be some blood splatters maybe, and dirt accumulating, depending on the time the player spends in a certain level. We want to add a layer of dust on top of his armor and his clothing. I'm going to take the breastplate, and I'll add a clipping group again with Control shift g Now I'll start painting dirt on it. Grab a dark brown, a bit of red in there, and I'll paint that, but really, really fast. So the dirt will come from the bottom. I'm adding a little bit of brushwork in there. Then I'll fire up the Preserve Alpha, and I'll start darkening my color, have it lean towards reds a bit, and I'll add some darker tones at the bottom to really give the dirt some character. So you can see that there are lots of problems with that. First of all, the effect is uniform. Second, it happens in places where you wouldn't find dirt normally. In all the nuts and crannies, in all the areas of contact of different objects, you won't find too much dirt. Same thing on the right side here, on the right edge. We have to remove that. To do so, I'll select my layer and add a transparency mask again. And now I'll pick a different brush, this one. Pick a dark color, and I'll start removing dirt. It's on the sides, at the top. The interesting part about that is that you can gradually remove or add dirt as you want. You'll probably want to layer in multiple layers of it. But if you take a look, without and with it, we can already get a sense of either rust in there, or if we add a few splatters, a few manual details on a new layer, it will start to look like dirt. So I'm adding a bit of blood-like effect on top of the dirt, simply because it's more the blood that will splatter on top of the character, rather than dirt coming from the ground. I can add a transparency mask to the blood layer and start to erase it a bit in parts, especially at the bottom where you have the sword and the belt that will take some of the splatters. This would be about the size of the character in-game. If it doesn't look too great in close-up, it's not as important to have the details look good from up close, because it has to look good in-game, period. And that's very important, that's something we have to learn as game artists. If you start to do that, you get that much more efficient. Okay, so let's look at before and after. That is with the blood splatters on the breastplate, and that's without them.